What is a freegan? Uh... A freegan in general. As far as I know, so I heard about freeganism very recently, like less than a month ago. I guess is anyone who tries to incorporate in their lifestyle um, ways of surviving and interacting with community that avoids money. I was dumpster diving consistently for the past two months, and a friend of mine was like, "Oh, you're a freegan." I would say a freegan is a person that has made a choice to give value to something that could be seen as valueless. You know what's funny, the first time I found out about freegans, it was kind of in a derisive sense that freegans are vegans who will eat meat if it's if they're not buying it and it's just an excuse for vegans who want to eat meat. <laughs> it's people who try and live off of waste or, or like free items and recycled items. My first exposure was when I was here for university in the 90s. I, um, I found out about Food Not Bombs, which is this group that's been around since the 80s, it started out as an anti-nuclear uh, group, but one of their earliest events, they uh, they catered with food that they got from dumpster diving, and then they kind of had the idea, of, like, well, let's make this a regular, going on on a regular basis. A lot of the food is either donated or dumpstered. Um, it's both, I guess. Um, what do you mean by dumpstered? Dumpstered, as in we go out and dumpster food, literally dumpster. Food. So you get it from the dumpster. Yeah. And now they have free meals that they'll serve to anyone you know who wants. Obviously, for you know reasons of necessity, a lot of homeless people show up, but anyone's welcome. And when I get off of work on time to, to make it, I love going down there and getting some of that. I feel like freeganism is on a spectrum. Um, I feel like you know I've had exposure to homeless people, college students, uh, parents. Um, I mean, I think there's there's a wide range, and I believe there, there are different types. You know, there are people that the majority of their diet is coming from that, and then there are others, like myself, that mainly supplement, um, trying to save money and stuff like that. Um, and then I believe there are, you know, hardworking parents that are just trying to save some money. Well, on the one hand, I'm uh, sort of an overprotective parent and, and don't really let my kid eat any of the stuff that I get from dives. On the other hand, I feel it's more important to me now than ever to try to live my values, you know, and I want my kid to see that, like, we're trying, you know, we're trying to make it a world that's about more than just money. You know? So a dive, my friends and I, our equipment includes a bunch of flashlights, recyclable gar uh, bags, and a car, because we want to make sure that we are safe to arrive and safe to leave if we need to in a quicker fashion. And we'll leave, depending on when the store closes, we wait like an hour to an hour and a half after the closing time to show up. Or no, two, two hours to so two and a half hours after the closing time, because in the past we've arrived too early and so we'll like time it, it's usually between midnight and one, then we'll go to our shop. Okay, so they're still there. These cars have to go, look to your far right, there's a dumpster with all the bags. So wait, do they work there? Or? Yeah, they're, they're, that's employee parking, so they're probably just doing their thing. Okay, so I will do a UE and we'll do a round, but it looks like they're heading out, which is awesome. We'll park right by the dumpster, go right in. A lot of the dumpsters open up on the sides as opposed to the top, so you don't have to like get too dirty. I share that the bags are double bagged for, for food usually single bag for waste so you can immediately tell which ones you're going to want to go into and look at and the stuff on the top is assumed to be the most recent stuff thrown in um, so we'll open up a bag and you can see the sell by date if it was that day I mean you could go at 9 30 that night before store closes at 10 and buy everything in these bags and spend hundreds of dollars or wait four hours show up at 12 31 and you could get it for free in these bags of the garbage the bread, the bread is like a major thing you can find because it's baked daily and so they'll just throw it away because they can't it's not daily tomorrow so they'll just toss it. So there's literally bags and boxes and parts of baked bread that's fresh today. They all are totally good. We gotta be careful. There's some of like whatever spills on things you gotta be careful. So there's eggs yeah. on some of this bag. But literally I'll go home and I'll wash all these off and I'll be completely fine. Or so I'm a gluten-free girl, but if anyone wants to cross it, it's open at the bottom, but it's fine. Depending on how much stuff is in there, anywhere between like a half an hour to an hour, it really depends because some nights they'll be throwing away 
big big signs or stuff like that. Some nights there'll be a lot of other waste that's in there, um, not necessarily food. And oftentimes I'll find other people there. So there was one time where there was a homeless man who was there before us, and we kind of waited our turn because we understand he's probably in an easier place than we are. So we wait, waited until he left and then went in after him, and he'd already found where the goods were, so he went where he was. There's etiquette. You're not really supposed to like go hacking through bags and stuff like that. You're supposed to untie them. Respect the store. And so when you go in, you can't make a complete mess of their dumpster because it will attract flies and mold, and then they'll be more inclined to lock it up the following day, and so you won't have access to it in the future. But second thing is for other people who will want a dumpster dive, I can't ruin them. Or I wouldn't take everything anyways because there's so much of one item. Like usually there's a lot of one thing that was thrown away that day. One time it was banana bread, so we or bananas, so we ate banana bread for a week. Last night it was tomatoes, so we ate salsa for a week. But you can't, you wouldn't take everything and you would leave it in a way, like opening the bag at the top, and so you can close it back up and the next person who arrives will have access to it. I mean, the typical dive, you find a lot of really great stuff, like for example, here's the eggs, but you have to just be careful because it'll get smeared, but a lot of people won't take the stuff home if it's dirty. Like for example, this bag will have one rotten lemon or lime in it, but you go home, you throw it the one rotten lime, and you wash off some eggs, and the food's completely fine. So depending on your level of comfort when it comes to gross stuff, you can really get a lot of great things. Part of the reason why I do go to the dumpster is just because of the amount of waste and how much that kind of breaks my heart. And I feel like a lot of people could think about others before choosing what they throw away, even if it's just like asking other people or if they know food's going bad. Like, there's so much food, even in this dumpster alone, that could feed probably a whole entire neighborhood. And if they're not, if you can't eat it raw, you can cook with it, you can distribute, you can cut it up and make it into a salad. Like, there's so much you can do with it. So it's just a matter of, you know, being conscious of what you have and being conscious of your standards. Because if we lowered our standards a little bit in terms of the presentation of things, you could really, really use a lot more than we do on a daily basis. The reactions that I get personally when I am now the self acclaimed figure is. <laughs> Some of my friends are like, that's gross. Like, really, that's gross. <laughs> Myself, no. <laughs> I'm sure there are some conservatives who kind of look at it as like stuff that dirty hippies do. <laughs> dirty hippies that are rummaging through trash for rolls. <laughs> I, don't know, I would never do it. <laughs> I'd have to really be in a bad situation. I think that it would have to be a necessity for me. If they don't need to. That they have to come to that to like dive into the dumpsters yeah. for food. If it's their life choice, I can really do it. They do what they need to do, but um, if you have the means to get food, I don't really see why you need to. Uh, I, I mean, I'd say I don't wouldn't have a problem with it unless homeless people got their food that way and that was leaving less for the actual people who are not doing it. If what's deterring you is that you think you're going to be taking food away from the homeless, you're kidding yourself because there is so much food that goes to waste that even with a, you know, with a, like, a tin, what are we up to? I think we came back down like 8% unemployment rate or whatever we're at. That if, even if 8% of the country was out there digging in the dumpsters, there'd still be leftover food. I think they'd assume that they weren't, like, well off or they, like, were poor. But, like, yeah. I guess you said, like, some of them have a place to live and could afford food. So you'd, like, assume they weren't. You know, it spans such a wide range of ages and cultures and races and, you know, economic positions and education levels. And I think it shows that within each little sector of society, there are people who recognize that it, this is wasteful. I think it's an exposure because you can't judge a, you know, people's lifestyle and, and make assumptions on who they are as a person unless you get to know them and see where it comes from and see what their angle is because some people can't afford it. Like right now I'm in a predicament, not a predicament, but I'm in a choice that I would like to, if I can live in a way that I'm not spending money on things I don't have to, I'm not going to. And that's kind of my personal passion around dumpster diving is that there is so much waste. And this food that when we go in there and we see is like, it's perfectly fine. Yes, there might be like one thing that ruined the plastic packaging or something, but there is literally, I could feed myself for, like I have been, for two months I fed myself completely off of waste going twice a week. So if I went every night, how much food can I get? There is so much waste and it's completely really fine food. The one thing that I think is really important is veganism is just, I mean, in my perspective, completely living creativity. I feel like it's becoming more, not more relevant, but I feel like it's becoming more appealing as the younger generation gets involved in it. Um, and I, I feel like it's exciting because when you involve different age ranges, the creativity takes on new forms and, you know, you get more organized and stuff like that. So who knows where it can go. And I'm personally, I'm in a financially secure place, so it's really just a choice of 
you know, if I had money or if I have a lot of money, like what am I going to spend it on? And if I don't have to spend it on X, I can spend it on Y. So I don't have to dumpster dive. I can feed myself otherwise. I just choose to because I can. I'm a freegan. He's a freegan. She's a freegan. Wouldn't, Wouldn't you, you like, like to be a freegan too? too? That was so perfect. <laughs> that was